Hello, welcome back. In continuation with my previous uh, talk, uh, now I'll be uh, uh, discussing with you about functional organization of a human genome. Uh, soon after sequencing of the human genome, uh, and then uh, there is a plethora of studies that has been initiated in terms of understanding the human genome and then the expression of genes that it have or birds. So the microarray technology was the one which was predominantly used during the time uh, in order to understand the genes which are being transcribed in a cell type specific manner. Then uh, by comparing the sequence information and then genes that are present uh, within the linear sequence of the DNA and then genes that are being transcribed in multiple cell lines, it has come to know that the genes that are uh, there in the human genome, they are not randomly placed on the uh, DNA sequence. Instead, they are clustered at the primary sequence level. Not only clustered, uh, any any gene that is being expressed in a particular cluster, uh, it is it is uh, seen that even the neighboring genes of the particular cluster, all of them are expressed in a cell type specific manner. So the co-regulated genes are organized in linear clusters throughout the human genome. Housekeeping genes, however, strong clustering. However, tissue specific genes do not cluster. Now at the same time, see all these times we were discussing about how the genome is actually packaged and how it is seen within the uh, nuclear environment. But if you look into the very fundamental nuclear processes such as transcription and then uh, replication and the recombination, uh, uh, recombination, but how actually these functions are organized within the nucleus. So uh, one of the protein that is mainly responsible for converting DNA to RNA, a process called transcription, is RNA polymerase 2. In humans, there are three different kinds of RNA polymerases. Uh, the RNA polymerase 2 is the enzyme which is responsible for uh, transcription of most of the protein coding genes. And at the same time, if you try to uh, look how exactly the chromatin and the transcription is organized within this spatial organization of a genome, and then it, uh, uh, it, it is learned that it is the gene activity is compartmental. I'll be discussing in more details what they actually mean by compartmentalization. Now, at the same time, if you try to locate any protein that is known to play a role in transcription process, for example, RNA polymerase 2 enzyme or basal transcription factors or cell type specific transcription factors, whenever researchers try to locate these particular proteins within the uh, within the cell or within the nucleus, uh, it was learned that they're not seen uh, they're not seen like a uh, they're seen like a large nuclear foci which are distributed throughout the nucleus they're not a diffuse pattern but instead they appear like a large nuclear foci but now uh, the lot of studies that were conducted uh, uh, subsequent to these observations with help of immunofluorescence and then some of the molecular tools uh, now we know more about what are these kind of nuclear foci or are these foci are now we refer them as a uh, nuclear bodies are nuclear compartments that mean each and every uh, protein that what you see they uh, form a more or less a unique set of uh, uh, intranuclear compartments and then in that context one of the largest compartment that is seen which is membraneless but uh, which uh, uh, which is considered one of the uh, uh, nuclear organelles where it is called nucleolus all of us are aware of the fact that uh, nucleolus is seen within the nucleus but it is not bound with any kind of membrane. Now, a uh, lot of studies pertaining to the what exactly constitutes the uh, uh, nucleolus and then uh, 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 has been done and then to make the uh, story in short. And then now we know that this dedicated structure that what we see them as a nucleolus is nothing but it is the center where ribosomal RNAs are being transcribed. As all of you are aware that if you take any given gene, there are two copies exist in a single nucleus. But unlike these kind of uh, uh, genes which exist in two copies, there are some kind of genes which exist in multiple copies. They are called, uh, they're, they're placed in tandem repeats. In that context, these genes which code for ribosomal RNA, they are present more than two copies. In human genome, there are approximately 1,000 copies of ribosomal RNA genes are present, but these genes are not randomly placed here and there. They are distributed among these five different chromosomes and they're present exclusively at the acrocentric regions. And then when they're present, they're present in tandem repeats, approximately 100 to 200 genes which are placed next to each other uh, uh, within this particular chromosome. And then it was known that uh, when these ribosomal RNA genes are transcribed, it requires, requires a special polymerase called RNA polymerase 1. And then RNA polymerase 1 and then all other associated factors are required for the transcription of individual ribosomal RNA genes. 
Just imagine thousands of same kind of genes which require same kind of protein missionary. Then gradually, what happens is that individually uh, the these genes promoters are bound with RNA polymerase one, and then and then it's a transcription fa fa factors. And then over the period of time, they all uh, all these particular genes and then factors uh, they gradually aggregate uh, three-dimensionally and then uh, and then forms a single center. Uh, which which appears like a single entity that is called nucleolus, which is dedicated for transcription of all these thousands of ribosomal genes, which are distributed across five different chromosomes and in deployed cell, then immediately 10 different chromosome territories, all of them are clustered together, forms a single center where the ribosome RNA transcription is going. This kind of phenomenon by which uh, uh, similarly requiring Factors along with the genes and then RNA forms a some kind of a structure which will be phase which, which whose phase is separated out from other nucleoplasm phase liquid phase and this kind of a phenomenon is called liquid liquid phase separation. So just to give you briefly what exactly mean by liquid liquid phase separation, just two liquids but with their different phases. For example, if you add a, 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 a oil droplets into the water and then shake it. And then you know the uh, uh, oil is a different phase, but it's liquid. Water is a different phase, but it is also uh, liquid. But this kind of a liquid-liquid phase separation will ensure that these kind of things, which are uh, thermodynamically more stable, and then uh, 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 they attain once they attain equilibrium, all these genes which are spread across five, uh, ten different chromosomes, they cluster and then forms a dedicated center called nucleus. So upon uh, knowing the uh, mechanism by which this uh, nucleus is formed. Then similar kind of uh, uh, phenomena might be expected as far as the nuclear bodies are concerned. In that case, one of the fundamental uh, 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 nuclear process is transcription. As we all aware that it is uh, it is performed by a, a special group of uh, enzymes, RNA polymerase two. But we know that in a given cell type in any human cell, approximately uh, four to uh, six thousand genes are transcriptionally active. If you can imagine that each and every gene is bound with RNA polymerase two binding and then and then moving and then uh, when it is uh, transcribing you can see that when you try to locate a RNA polymerase 2 enzyme within the three-dimensional space of the nucleus one would expect this kind of diffuse pattern where each spot shows shows the presence of a RNA polymerase 2 which is actively engaged in a gene because in a particular cell type approximately four to six thousand genes are transcriptionally active then you would expect a similar uh, number of uh, uh, nuclear fossil but uh, in reality when researchers are performed the immunofluorescence studies with the RNA polymerase 2 enzyme, they see that this kind of large nuclear force, as if multiple RNA polymerase are clustered and then they are there in some part of the, uh, uh, within the nucleus. And initially they were thought that, uh, there were questions rise, what are these particular uh, nuclear domains or are they are artifacts or they really exist? In fact, life cell studies also confirms that this kind of large nuclear RNA polymerase 2 force does exist, but what are they? Are there storage sites or that, or that is it that these are the sites where active transcription is going on? If the active transcription is going on, why that? You have only a few number of uh, uh, RNA polymerase 2 nuclear fossil. Now, with the help of a powerful uh, RNA, uh, DNA, immunofish, where you can simultaneously detect the DNA and then RNA protein together, these kind of elegant studies have demonstrated that these uh, large uh, RNA polymerase 2 enrich nuclear uh, uh, bodies or nuclear uh, centers are 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 uh, happens to be the sites for active transcription. Where you can see that one of the gene HBB1 uh, uh, primary transcripts are seen within the vicinity of a RNA polymerase 2 nuclear foci, suggesting that this RNA polymerase 2 enriched foci is nothing but these are the centers where active transcription is going on. Now we know that these uh, RNA polymerase 2 enriched centers are having thousand fold higher concentration of active form of RNA polymerase 2. Even BRU pulse label shows that this life cell dynamics are in fact shows that they really exist. At the same time, an average 200 to 400 force uh, uh, are uh, seen per, uh, per uh, nucleus, and then considering the four, 400 express genes and then 800 express alleles, it is most likely that each and every force that what you see is the centers where multiples are being transcribed. Is that true? In fact, the, uh, by labeling multiple genes with multiple colors, and then detecting simultaneously DNA, RNA, and protein, it has been unequivocally shown that this large nuclear force that RNA polymerase 2 force that what you see is nothing but these are the centers where 
genes from the same chromosome territory or different chromosome territory, which happens to be the neighbors, and these genes predominantly cluster along with RNA polymerase 2 and then his oloenzyme complex and then all other accessory factors forms a single center, a dedicated centers for where multiple genes are being coordinately transcribed within the uh, three-dimensional space of the nucleus. So genes are not transcribed alone. They are transcribed in groups that uh, in, in this kind of dedicated centers uh, where uh, uh, you see uh, uh, within the nucleus. And now it is more established that these kind of dedicated uh, RNA polymerase 2 cent uh, centers are called transcription factories. And more recently, they are referred to as transcription condensates where multiple genes are undergoing active transcription. And here is that these are the dynamic structures which are formed out of a function. And then in that context, the uh, these dynamic RNA polymerase 2 and these centers are more or less stable, whereas the DNA or the genes which are uh, seen near to the, this particular entity, they are real through for process of transcription. So in that scenario, the uh, DNA is mobile, whereas the RNA polymerase 2 are more or less stable. So not only the active genes are being clustered, and then these clustered genes are unique for each and every cell type. So liver may have different networks. These are called physical gene networks. And then brain may have different physical network because you know chromosome directed neighborhood also is different in each and every cell type. Consequently, all along with the uh, chromosome directed neighborhood, even there is a very probability that genes which are there within this neighborhood chromosome directory, they tend to cluster. And if they happens to have a same kind of regulatory factors. Similarly, even for gene silencing, genes cluster intrachromosomally and then interchromosomally. One of the classical examples that was shown for uh, gene, act uh, gene uh, interaction, gene gene interactions it, for silencing is that, so in case of Drosophila, uh, there are uh, uh, in, in chromosome number three R, there is a gene called ANTP and then uh, ADPB. They are located far away from each other, nearly 50 to 60 megabytes away from each other. And if you label antenna with the uh, uh, red color and then ADB with the pink color, if you try to detect these genes within the uh, tissues where these two genes are switched off, and you see that this is the ADP1 gene and then ANTP gene, and then they are co localized with a protein which is known to be a repressive protein called polygon group of proteins. And then polygon group of protein all does it form, it also forms some kind of nuclear domains. Now we can see that all these nuclear domains enriched for polygon group of proteins are, are, are enriched with uh, these genes which are placed far away from each other when they are transcriptionally silent. But in a location within the drosophila, the posterior location, where out of these two genes, one gene is on. But when the gene is on, if you try to locate the transcriptionally active gene and then this uh, transcriptionally repressed antennapedia by labeling with different colors and then colocalizing the PCG group of protein, you can see that the copy that is uh, highly transcribed that moves away from the this uh, silencing factor, suggesting that both for gene activation and then silencing within the human genome, genes cluster uh, intrachromosomally or interchromosomally for a coordinated transcriptional control of gene expression pertaining to that particular cell of our interest. So this is the model to show that polycom dependent regulatory contact between distant loci that will ensure that genes from same chromosome or different chromosome, they cluster dimensionally within the polycom group of protein nuclear domains. Okay, for that, so ha having this uh, uh, information, structure, there is structural organization specific to particular cell type, and at the same time, a lot of functions are organized based on this particular structure. Then very one of the important question is that, how come that parental cell specific genome architecture and the gene expression patterns are memorized and then they're retained by the daughter cells is one of the very fundamental questions. So in this regard, genome architecture studies that what we have discussed so far will give us the explanation for how that a parental cell specific genome structure and then functions are memorized through mitotic cell process and then they are retained to the uh, daughter cells. So in this regard, when a parental cell comes to undergo cell division, after uh, uh, then it enters the synthetic phase, the genome is duplicated, then every chromosome territory try to condense it itself. So chromosomes, duplicated chromosomes are condensed now. And then uh, 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 in the condensed chromos chromosomes, uh, you see that there is a regions called heterochromatin and euchromatin. They still retain these histone marks, which are reminiscent of a euchromatin or heterochromatin. 
and uh, uh, chromatin then gradually when during uh, um, uh, during different stages of a cell cycle beta phase ana phase and then telophase uh, as you can see that this uh, now the chromosomes are duplicated and then chromosomes are segregated towards the opposite poles and then following karyokinesis and then cytokinesis as you can see that each and every daughter cells receive the exact copy number of the dna uh, 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 chromosomes and then chromosomes as soon as they enter the early g1 phase they started decondensing and then uh, as as they decondense what happens is that the regions which are having activation modification which is blue color and they, they tend to be at the nuclear interior the regions which are having uh, selection modifications uh, uh, they tend to be aggregate within the chromosome context and then they aggregate again they are pushed towards the nuclear periphery as a result you can see that all the heterochromatin which is uh, labeled in orange color is seen at the nuclear periphery uh, uh, from each and every chromosome but throughout the genome is the same situation all the uh, euchromatic component they are seen at the nuclear interior and then depending upon the cell type each and every chromosome territory positioning and then neighborhood are are retained during this particular stage of uh, uh, cell cycle that is late g1 as a result the structure of a pro genome architecture of a parental cell is recapitulated even in the uh, daughter cells uh, through the epigenetic uh, 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 epigenetic memory of histone modifications uh, which are retained through the process of uh, cell division and then subsequently depending upon the structure now the genes which are uh, uh, exposed they, they has a probability to be transcribed thus these daughter cells uh, are derived from a particular parent cell they memorize those uh, transcription patterns and then they do transfer the same kind of things that's how the dynamically structure uh, uh, and then functions are highly correlated the structure dictate function uh, uh, and then at the same time function again dictates the uh, structure uh, in the context of uh, cell cycle so here i will stop thank you